Hi, Taras here from Top Shelf Aquatics Farm. Now, what does this sea cucumber, this brittle star, this amphipod, this dove snail, this trochus snail, this stomatella, what do all these things, these creepy crawlies, these odds and ends, these misfit toys, what do they all have in common? They're born here. At Top Shelf Aquatics, we take great pride in trying, to the best of our ability, to identify clean up crew organisms that are breeding in our systems, acknowledge the ones that have pretty much overwhelmingly beneficial characteristics, and then we take great pride in trying to breed those and offer them to you, sustainably aquacultured organisms which have never known the wild, which will be born, raised, and destined to live their life serving the beauty of reef aquariums. Now, the reef aquarium industry is absolutely defined by cleanup crew organisms. There's not a tank around that doesn't have an urchin or a snail or hermit crabs, all kinds of cleanup crew that are used to take out algae, modulate uneaten food, and basically kind of preserve a semblance of that grand ecological orchestration that we know is responsible for a grand majestic coral reef. But let's consider some realities. Back in the day, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, there was plenty of cleanup crew for a relatively limited reef aquarium market. You could get 1,000, 10,000, 100,000 hermit crabs, and for the most part, they could be shipped anywhere across the world, and they could be enjoyed for a relatively low price. They could be produced, used, and then repurchased anytime you needed more. Unfortunately, with many, many, many organisms, that is no longer going to be the case now, if it is still the case now, and certainly won't be the case in the future. I invite you to consider those natural ecosystems when all, where all those cleanup crew organisms come from. Those beaches, those lagoons, those estuaries, those coral flats, those mangrove swamps. At their peak, they probably can only produce X amount of cleanup crew organisms. Now, that demand and that production of cleanup crew will probably never increase likely. Maybe it would go down if someone, let's say, builds a mini mall on top of that mangrove swamp or a giant series of palm groves, but its production will never go up. But the reef aquarium industry, the demand, the people that want those cleanup crew organisms, that want that specific sand sifting starfish because that's what they heard is the best way to start their tank, that demand will always rise. And it will rise as nations across the world uh, have more and more individuals that get into reef keeping, have access to reef keeping, and have access to be able to purchase these organisms. So a finite amount of organisms, clean up crew critters that are born in the wild, they only have so many places they can go before we risk the chance of over harvesting. Now, for some clean up crew organisms, they have very long, complicated planktonic uh, larval life cycles. Hermit crabs are a good example. Even cleaner shrimp are a good example. But the broad majority of the other ones, your urchins, your fighting conchs, the things that we grow here, Florida sea cucumbers, brittle stars, stomatella snails, these can be produced in the aquarium. And in some cases, it takes a little bit of aquaculture uh, and setup and technique like an aquaculture facility like this. But in other situations, these organisms sustainably reproduce in the aquarium with very minimal extra effort on behalf of the aquarist. Now, it's in my opinion that this set of Vanguard cleanup crew critters are the future of the bulk of the reef aquarium industry because not only can they fulfill many of the same ecological tasks of removing algae, consuming uneaten waste and detritus, and consuming uneaten feed, but they can reproduce in the system so that the average aquarist doesn't need to keep buying them again and again and again, and they can also act as wonderful canaries in the coal mine. If I have a thousand stomatellas in my tank, and then a couple months later, I have almost none, you know something has happened. Maybe your water quality has changed, maybe the algae profile has changed, maybe you have a wrasse that's just eating them all. But by having a population of cleanup crew that your tank has grown up with, aged with, and organisms that have been born and died in that aquarium, you have an infinitely better uh, series of canaries to kind of predict where your tank is going. But overall, the reef aquarium industry, I believe in my bones, will be the entity of having more sustainable aquaculture everywhere in the world. Because the average aquarist and reef keeper gets to appreciate organisms that otherwise they would have to spend thousands of dollars and travel hundreds of miles and thousands of miles to go see, we have an appreciation and therefore perhaps an obligation that organisms that 
fulfill a service that serve us oh so dutifully to make our tanks beautiful, to make our corals happy, to make our fish survive, perhaps we should treat them with the same level of appreciation and grace. Perhaps our tanks, as opposed to being some temple that they polish and scrub and they can be discarded and repurchased, perhaps there, our tanks can be their home, a place where they can grow, have children, and exist all within this grand orchestration that we've built, the reef tank. I believe that sustainably producing these little insignificant little critters, these sea cucumbers, these little worms, these brittle stars, that we are taking bold new steps towards a fantastic sustainable dawn for this industry and this hobby that I love all so much. Thank you, we'll see you next time.